Hi friends, I'm Ulrich with Ufix It Auto and today I'm going to be showing you how to install subs into your car or truck. Doing this is going to save you money and you can make sure that everything is done correctly. And everything I use will be linked down in the description below. I'm going to be working on a 2000 GMC Sierra and the first step that I want to do is I want to remove the rear seats by removing these four bolts. This is going to give me access to where I can mount the amp and where I'm going to put the sub box. And that's four. Just make sure the seat belts are out of the way. And with the seat gone, now you can see just how much working room that we have. And then we go on to preparing the sub box. We're going to need to attach speaker wire uh, here and here, which is the positive and negative. And make sure it corresponds to the colors on the outside, red for positive, black for negative. So grab your speaker wire. I'm going to use about a foot length. Not too much so it doesn't rattle in there and then strip off both ends. Just make sure you have some good wire strippers handy. We're going to be doing it on both sides since one side goes to the sub and the other side goes to the box. Just make sure to twist the cable a little bit to make it easier to put in the terminal ends. Now you can just attach the terminal ends and call it good. I'm going to take it a step above and put some heat shrink on it. Heat shrink is a great way in order to make sure that your terminal ends do not slip off. We just slip on the terminal end and then crimp it down. Do the same thing for the other side, blue for negative. And with a heat gun or a hair dryer, then just go over it until it goes snug onto the wire. And now we're ready for the sub to go inside of the box. So we're just going to take note of where the positive and the negative are. Attach our positive cable on the positive and the negative on the negative. You can see here that our positive is marked with a plus and our negative with a minus. And now it's ready to slide into the box. If it matters to you, just make sure the sub is facing the correct way. I'm just going to use some drywall screws that I had lying around in order to secure the sub to the box. Now this is everything that you're going to need for a sub install. You're going to need your sub and sub box. Of course you're going to need an amplifier. You're going to need a good wiring kit, which you can pick this install gear wiring kit up at Amazon. Inside the kit you're going to find some RCAs. You're going to find a ground cable and a power cable and they should both be the same gauge. It'll come with a line cable. It'll come with a fuse and then it'll come with mounting hardware and it'll come with some wire loom and some speaker wire. These are the RCAs that it came with. It's thin cables so that it could slip within the trim and it's nice but I had this pair of Amazon Basics cable which is a little bit thicker and it's going to be a little bit nicer. I'll be sure to link these RCAs down in the description down below as well. If you have a side post battery like most GM vehicles then you're going to need this side post extender and possibly some Gorilla Tape in order to mount the fuse. It's really strong double-sided tape since this is a fairly large fuse. And with that we're ready to get started. You're just going to want to figure out where you want to mount your sub box. Uh, luckily mine is fit for the driver's side so we're just going to place that there. And next we find out where to mount our amp. You can mount it behind a seat. You can mount it up against the back of the car or you can even mount it on the floor. Also be sure that wherever you're drilling that you don't drill into a fuel tank or that you're gonna hit anything that's important. I'm gonna be mounting it to the back right here so I'm gonna be cutting away this insulation just enough in order to fit the amplifier and to show a little bit of the wires. So with our trusty razor blade we're just gonna cut through and make a hole big enough to fit our amp. Making sure to test fit and remember measure twice cut once. We're gonna hold it in place with double-sided tape while we screw it in. And next we connect our ground wire. So we're just going to put this little sleeve in and then measure how much insulation we're going to cut and slide up so we know where to cut it. With the razor blade you just want to cut along the insulation only. Then you can re remove the insulation. Now putting an end on thick cable might prove to be a challenge. 
So we're going to be using this tool by Chrome. It's nice because it's an inexpensive tool that you just need a hammer with. You just slide on this lever and put the terminal end right below it. And then you just hammer away until it crimps on there. Make sure to not have the sleeve on there when you do hammer it down so it doesn't break the sleeve. But it's nice because normally you would need an expensive tool to do this. Just find a solid surface and hammer it in. So with our speaker wire in, we're able to use a screwdriver in order to screw it on the side that says ground. I cut away a little bit here so that way I can show a little bit of the wires and I'm going to cut it right here because that's where it's going to be grounded. I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut the wire. It may take time since it's thick. Put on the sleeve, take off a little bit of the insulation, cutting away roughly about an inch of insulation. Twist the cables a little bit to make it easier for the terminal to go on. And then use our crimping tool, see how effective it is, and then put the sleeve right over it. With the screwdriver or self-tapping screw, just grind away the metal so that way it's bare metal. And with the self-tapping screw, we're just going to mount our ground wire. With the power wire, you're going to want to find out whether you want to go down the driver's side or the passenger side. Uh, and that is determined by where the wiring harness grommet is. If you look at the engine bay, you're going to want to locate where the wiring harness goes through the firewall. In my case, on this 2000 GMC Sierra, it's going to be right over here right next to the brake booster on the driver's side. So we're going to want to route the power wire through here on the driver's side. So we're just going to go ahead and connect it here and then route it through the cabin. Now for the remote wire, I'm going to be using a reusable ferrule set. If you're into car audio and you don't have a set of these, I would recommend buying them. They make these cables reusable with having, without having to strip these apart consistently if it slips out. Just put one on and then heat shrink it so that way it stays in place. Now with our remote wire in place we're just going to route it down the same path as the power wire. You can run the RCAs down the same path as these but I like to run them down the opposite side so that way we don't get any noise interference just in case. So we're just going to route it through behind the insulation making sure the wires are not too visible. Next I'm going to be showing you how to clean up the wires using a pro tip method. You just grab a zip tie and then you zip tie all the wires together and start to tie it but not all the way. You leave a little bit of room. You grab another zip tie and route it in between the two wires here and then another one on the other side. And then finally we're able to tighten this side all the way. And with a pair of wire cutters or flush cutters as you see here, you can cut these flush. It's a great tool to get if you don't have one. Then you just move the bulk end of the zip tie to the back on both sides. Steps like these are what get, are gonna set apart your wiring from most installers. So that way the wiring looks clean. You could also use Tessa tape, but I think that this method makes it look a little cleaner and shows off your skill. Next with the RCAs, we're just gonna go ahead and plug them in, red to red, silver to white and route this behind the insulation as well and start tucking it away underneath the trim. If you need to remove trim in order to tuck these underneath, then go ahead and do so. The less wire seen, the cleaner this install will look. Now to make wiring a little bit easier, I'm gonna have to remove these seats because if you see, the trim piece goes up and into here and I won't be able to route it through unless I go under the seat and I want to make sure that the cables are hidden. So I'm going to need a e-torx bit and then I can remove the seats. With the seats gone, I can continue the routing. Once you get towards the kick panel, then I had to remove the kick panel. This allowed me to route the cable up. You can lower the glove box by pushing on this tab here and then you can easily route it up to where the radio is. Now, you do have to remove your dash trim in order to make it easy. Every car is different. For the 2000 GMC Sierra, I was able to just pop out. The dash kit I was able to remove simply by pushing down on these tabs over here, and then it was able to slide right out. Now, I just fished the RCA wires through this hole right over here. I was able to stick my hand through the glove box, fish it through and grab it with my other hand, and now the RCAs are in position, ready to put in the back of the radio. 
here we have the back of my aftermarket radio as you can see there is an f for front r for rear and sw for subwoofer sometimes you may have only just these four and but it'll say r slash sw and then that's where you put your rcas next we're going to move on to the power wire and the remote wire we just route it through the opposite side i removed the trim here to make it a little bit easier but this truck had plenty of space in order for you to put the power wire through Try to get the power wire and the remote wire as far down as possible so the trim looks like it did before. Right here is where the power wire and the remote turn on wire part ways. You want this to look as clean as possible so I zip tied it to here on this wiring harness for the OBD2, wired it across the frame and zip tied it to the frame of the dashboard. Then I wired it up and through where the radio is. Now we can move on to the power wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a screwdriver, push in the grommet, and kind of leave it there as a placeholder to let me know where the power wire is going to route through. Just look for the screwdriver on the other end, and then route the power wire through. This step might differ with other cars. So we just grab the power wire and fish it through where we made an opening. This may take time, but once you get it through, most of the hard work is over. Pull as much as of the power wire as you can. As you can see, I have quite a bit left over, so I'll be cutting some of this off. Make sure to disconnect the battery from this point on since we're gonna be working on the electricals. We're gonna be replacing this positive terminal end with the extended bolt, so you just grab it and pull it off. Twisting also helps. Then we just mount this one back in its place. It just pops right in. It also helps to screw it in a little bit. This adapter allows you to mount the power wire directly to the positive terminal end. We're going to be mounting it here temporarily, so I'm just going to cut it right over here. I will be making a custom fuse mount, so that way I, it doesn't mount to the fuse box. Just find some nice open space. With the cut wire, you're going to want to put the ring terminals on for this fuse. Some fuses are different, but this uses ring terminals. So now we're going to mount the fuse block on the fuse box. We're going to use some double-sided tape in order to mount it on there. Once it's on, you can just put on the ring terminals, tighten them down, and then you're ready to mount that on. But we're not going to connect the battery just yet. We're going to be working on the radio electricals. And you don't want to work on that while the battery is connected. Now the next step is to locate your remote turn-on wire on your aftermarket harness. Um, as you can see here on the back of my aftermarket radio, it'll say that the blue and the white is the remote turn on lead and that's what we're going to hook up our remote wire to. So with the butt connector, we're just going to connect this remote turn on wire. Now I would recommend you using uh, solder in order to connect speaker wire, but um, I don't have soldering uh, cable yet, but I will be doing that later on. So in the meantime, I will be using butt connectors in order to test the system. And then we're going to grab our remote turn on from our aftermarket wire and then connect that to the butt connector as well. And if you have some, I would also recommend using electrical tape or Tessa tape uh, in order to clean up the wiring. Next we just hook up our aftermarket wiring harness to the stock wiring harness. Connect that to our radio, and then connect our RCAs to red to red and white to white. Well, more silver, but. And the last step is to see how much speaker wire you're going to need in order to connect it to your amp, positive to positive, negative to negative. For a clean install, just cut off what you need. Measuring things out, I'm going to need roughly about this much. Then just strip the wires. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to be using wire ferrules in order to make the install a little bit cleaner. With a little editing magic, we now have our ferrules heat shrink to our speaker wire. Then you just connect the positive to the positive, and then just screw that down. Then the negative to the negative, and screw that down as well. Attach the speaker wires to the sub box, connect your battery, and then you're done. And that's it everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. And let me know what you guys would like to see down in the comment section down below. I upload videos weekly.
and I have projects so that way you guys can see them built. Thanks again for watching.